Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plaster. And today I want to mention something I see often. People will saw cut the perimeter and add a window. Can you do this? Sure you can. These guys did. They left the wire in there, but it's got a straight cut. Now I tell people, like this fellow, I said, I can, I can put that together. I could even use this, uh, this blue stuff. This is weld creep made by Larson's. It's a bonding agent, and we could put the bonding agent here, give it more stick em. Uh, I, I put this blue here so that when we do plaster this, it's less likely to crack, but I always tell folks, you know we can get a perimeter crack unless you want to further continue it and break it out a little bit better. And most people say, no, I don't not worry about a perimeter crack. When I'm talking about a perimeter crack, I am talking about a crack that say, uh, a good paint will flood. That's not a big deal. Now, what, what I'm prepared to do here is, they tried it right here and did an okay job, but uh, not on the money. So what we're gonna do is pretty it up a little bit for them and give them something a little bit more on the money. And by the way, guys, I recommend you cover a window. I got a guy who always emails me, watches my videos and says, Kurt, I'm a better plaster than you. And I say, how do you know? He says, because I don't need to cover my windows. And I said, well, that statement right there proves you're not a better plaster than me. Because if you don't cover your windows, you lose a ton of time. Plus, there are these holes right here which allow water to escape. And if you fill those up, it's a drag trying to uncover them, guys. You can destroy the window frames. Plus, you have screens. It's much faster to cover them much much faster because what I'm gonna do basically got a little bit of stiff mud here it's about 100 degrees that's okay nothing I can't handle I work in 100 degree weather many many times how we work in cold weather hot weather you name it we work it sides are done and okay because this mud set for a little while. That's okay. It is, uh, we'll have a tendency to set up real fast, which I do want. I want it to set up real fast because as fast as we mud this, I'm gonna go ahead and use a different mud that's already made for the texture. Now, you look at this texture, guys, you can tell, well I can tell, that is not a texture that is made with with the mud that we apply the base coat with. The mud that I'm using here is base coat mud. You can call it Portland cement and you do your scratch and brown or the base. I've got accelerators in here to accelerate the drying time. So the drying time rather than rather than have it come back two days I add the accelerator. Accelerator is about oh 60 bucks a bag as opposed to Portland which is about 15 bucks a bag. So anyway I'm gonna finish uh, mudding this out and I'll show you something about the texture when I get to that stage. And again you fellas watching me you folks want to do this it's a very hot day today, uh, so account for that. I mean, Jay can put the camera down and give me some better mud, but he knows I can work with this mud right here. So what we're going to do is cover their stuff up, cover it up, cover it up, put it in there, and one more scoop, and I got it made. And then. Then what I'll do is I'm going to allow this to set for about another, actually, uh, actually I think I'm going to start floating almost immediately. And what does floating mean? That means I take a hard rubber float and I compress it in there. And when I'm at that, since we don't have a hard rubber float back here, we're going to get one and I'm going to hard rubber float this. And I'll show you how we do the texture around here because this texture here is made with 
on, on a, a color coat. It's a cementitious color coat that's been painted. How do I know? I see the sheen plus I see this sheen here. Anyway, when we get to that stage, which is going to be about 10 minutes, we'll start that camera up again and show you. In the meantime, we'll have a couple more windows to do. All right, guys, let's see where I was. We're doing other windows here, and man, in the hot sun, it's like 103 out here. Anyway, um, here's what I did first. I took a hard rubber float. Why? Because I wanted to compress the stucco. I really compressed the shit out of it. I wanted to compact in there to hold real tight, especially to the sides. So that's what I did first with this hard rubber float. What's a hard rubber float mean? That means it's hard rubber. Uh, let me, this is hard and it's rubber. All right. We'll put that away, clean it off. Always clean the tools, guys. And then what I did was I used a sponge float. With this particular product, I wanted a lot of water. Why do I want a lot of water? Look at this base coat. That base coat has got sand in it, which means they color coated it, and then they came back and they floated it. Okay, you float it after you apply the base coat, then you put your skip trough finish. That's what gives it such a distinguished look. Uh, and this is the only wall this, this has been done to. The rest of the house has not got or didn't have a color coat maintenance free finish. It just had a skip trough finish, which looks quite different from this right here. Anyway, we match what we see. So this is bringing out the aggregate, bringing out the sand, fancy word for sand. Also, when you float it like this, you, you give it some water, it helps it cure hard, it fills in all the cracks and everything. Okay, we put this away, we go to our color coat material. Our color coat material should be what they used here originally, which is 1620. Not a problem. We take it and basically I got to get my tools because I cleaned them. I got to get the tools uh, somewhat where they can hold it again. If it's, you just put water on here and you got it perfectly clean, the mud will slide right off. All right, now you look at the finish they have here. Now this fellow was right-handed, he went to the, to the right a little bit, so that's exactly what I'll do. I'll take it here and skip it. We're just skipping it a little bit, guys. You just, a light hand, you look at it and just skip it. And if you like, you can go over the existing a little bit. That's why I always spread a little bit of well cream. That way, I can go over the existing just a hair. All right. What I'm doing is I'm looking up at what they've got so I can see they pulled it straight up. Hey, we can do that. We can pull it straight up. And that fella who says, gee, I'm better than you because I don't have to cover. Again, that's nonsense. We cover the bars. We cover uh, everything. In fact, man, I'll show you how easy it is to clean up your mess because I don't care how good you are. And I've, I've done bets before with guys saying, hey, let's see who can stay the cleanest. We'll bet this, we'll bet that. But if you get any mud in that screen, now you got to pull the damn screen off and clean it. So it is much easier to cover the darn window. All right. So we're taking it here. We're looking at that skip trial again. And it's, this guy was too easy. He went side. He took it from the window originally, went sideways. He took it here went up, took it here, so I'm, I'm matching exactly what he did. Here, I can see his style because it's similar to my own. And then we just take it right here, and I'm actually just putting it on right now. If I knock it down right this second, it'll be too prominent. We don't want it too prominent. We want it to match where, when we're done, Who's ever in that fancy jacuzzi right there, a hot tub, is not going to look over here and say, dude, that's some new windows put in, I see. Homeowner say, how can you tell? Because it looks like shit. We don't want that. All right, so I'm going to finish a couple little details, and then I'll show you. This, this is another good thing about Wellcrete, where you put the bonding agent a little further down, 
because this is painted and this will adhere. Sometimes you need to go a little bit further down than, than the patch itself. Sometimes we feather right into the patch only if it's a float finish, a dash, and if it's a skip chaw, you get a little bit over. Okay, I'm done. Now here's what I'm going to do. My skip chaw has a little bit more prominence in there. So I'm going to take it down a hair. Boom, there it is. I'll take this, and all I'm doing is knocking it down. And you don't have to look, guys. Just follow that wall. Just follow the wall. Follow the wall. Look where you're walking. That's about it. Okay, when we got that, you put the tools down, and the fellow who says, hey, man, I'm faster than you. I don't cover. That's pretty goofy, because all I do now is uncover, and blam, I'm done. Otherwise, even, I mean, I'm pretty good, but I could still drop a little bit, and it could hang right off of the edge of the chow and go on on that window if it gets in here you got to pull it so it's, it's a real drag anyway guys don't forget your caulking too he didn't have this caulked when i got here so we caulked it for him anyway that's how you do around the window with a saw cut it's better to break it out jag you'll probably rarely get those hairlines but if it did come it would be such a hairline flood will good paint will uh flood it anyway my name is kirk jason on the camera we're going to get busy because we're losing walls as usual we thank you for watching we'll see you guys on the next one once again folks we thank you for watching and i really enjoy all your comments if you guys like this video please click the like button down below and also if you enjoy what we do subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you my name is kirk and jay we thank you for watching and from the entire giordano family We'll see you on the next one.